There was a time that we used to liberate our country, and now is the time to liberate ourselves, myself, and everybody. I think it's so important for us, first as a human and more so as a LGBT community. I think we should be very proud of who we are. And once we reach to that point where you feel like you have it, then you should share it. This is the Belongings Podcast Series, produced by the ASEAN Soji Caucus with the support of Voice. Belongings is part of the Southeast Asian Queer Cultural Festival 2021. The series name has three elements. B means to exist. It shines the light on the existence and identity of the LGBTIQ. Longing is inspired by the word karinduan in Bahasa Indonesia or Bahasa Melayu and pangungulila in Filipino. It's the yearning for a region that is caring, inclusive, and respectful of diversity. And lastly, belonging. It stands as a reminder that the LGBTIQ people have always been part of the ongoing memory of the Southeast Asian region. Bella Galios is a freedom fighter who fought for the independence of Timor-Leste. She is a human rights activist and is now helping to create a better future for the young LGBT people in her country. It is so hard and very complicated to explain the life and the situation of LGBT here in East Timor. Because people are just don't talk about it. Talking about LGBT is like taboo as if you're talking about sex. So people just rather ignore that issue because for most families, it's a big shame. This is not normal things. And these people are not normal, so we should not be talking about it. So very complicated when you have to hide who you are and pretending to be somebody else who you are not to. And with my age, I think it's about time to come clear about who I am and be proud to be who I am. And then when I'm coming out to the publics, and of course, there are a lot of people who actually come to me, uh, a lot of young kids, especially LGBT. Um, that's how I learned about the community. That There are so many of us here in East Timor, but they're hiding. Some of them are even living, try to live like heterosexual community, getting married, have children. Uh, but, you know, of course, not all that going through that life completely. They have to have a double life of having partners, uh, same-sex partners, hiding in the bag. So it is most of the cases of uh, LGBT community here in Timor-Leste, uh, simply because of, um, you know, the culture, the religious uh, pressure, the society. A lot of people don't know about what LGBT is. Even the community of LGBT themselves don't know why they are who they are. Discrimination is rampant. Even Bella was discriminated from pursuing a job in public service. To openly live as a member of LGBT in East Timor, you risk a lot. Like I have been um, basically discriminated in many ways, uh, systematically or officially. I will not, I don't think that I will ever get any uh, job in the government levels because I was once almost get to that point, but then indirectly the issue of my sexual orientation was brought up. And that's how I was actually removed to be a potential members of government three years ago. Right now, I have to be independently creating a job for myself, trying to help the young LGBT because government have yet to spend even uh, one cent to the community of LGBT in the country. But the most affected sector is the youth. Many LGBT youth are abused physically and sexually. Where I have been working with more than 300 young LGBT in the country that, and I have been visiting their families in order to talk to their parents, not to beat them up, not to discriminate them, not to violate them in many ways. A lot of them actually have children pregnant by their own family, the idea of the corrective rape. 
And then a lot of them are never finished their elementary school, middle school, and high school. Majority of them are not even know how to read and write. And they're still under 30 years old. And most of the reason that they are out of the school, some of them putting out the, the reason of a uniform, that they don't feel like they're comfortable in wearing like skirt and all that. Some of them are not uh, feeling comfortable to have a long hair. And some of them, even their parents are actually feeling like it, it is a, uh, useless to invest on these children because of the characteristics that they have, parents don't understand. It has been a big issue we brought up in the country, but you know, unfortunately the government has yet to pay any attention to this issue. Uh, so all this become um, fundamental reasons why I become the first person to voice this issue in the country. In the beginning, I was single-handed, raised this issue, but now we have two organizations, Codiva, Timor-Leste, and our, the one that we just uh, set up is focused on LBT, the lesbian, bisexual, and trans. Bella made it her mission to take care of the LGBT youth who are neglected and abused. You know, uh, all of the young people, they're not belong to any homes or anything like that. They're actually living through their friends. And that's why our queries, Timor Leste, is also have kind of a shelter, like a kitchen, where we provided uh, food for them. They come, they can cook, they can eat. They also come and just to have a rest, to sleep for a few hours or so before uh, going somewhere else, you know, a safe place to, to crash or to sleep. And also, we have been trying to identify some of their uh, skills that they, something that we can actually help them with their vocational skills, like uh, carpentry and landscaping, gardening, and, uh, and some of them want to learn languages, uh, office work, like a computer and all this stuff. And uh, it's hard because these young people have never been invested or loved by their families. So yeah, it is very complicated, very hard, uh, take a lot of risk. And of course, people will uh, attack you. But being a strong person uh, as I am, I believe in what I, I preach. I'm not only preach, but I actually, I uphold it. It's uh, my principle. And it's not easy to actually crush me. And if you're talking about human rights, then you're talking about human. And you're talking about every human, regardless of who they are, where they're coming from, either they're disabled or they're LGBTs or there are Muslim, they're black, they're white, they're small, they're all people in any kind. So it is very hard to live in East Timor as LGBT. Not that they, they have yet to criminalize LGBT in East Timor like Indonesia, but, but it doesn't mean that they accept it. When it's come to acceptance, then we are still have a long way to go. I needed all the young leaders to be in the front line to speak about issues of human rights and in particular uh, LGBT issues. So yes, uh, I'm very optimistic things are changing, but the change that I wanted is yet to uh, take place. So work still need to be done. There was a time that we used to liberate our country and now is the time to liberate ourselves, myself and everybody. I think it's so important for us, first as a human and more so as a LGBT community, I think we should be very proud of who we are. I have gone through uh, this, the time where I have to lying about who I am, you know, disguise about my life and all that. It's so tiring and I want to be who I am and love who I am. And then once we reach to that point where you feel like you have it, then you should share it, inspire others to move forward with you know, their dreams, their plans, because we all belong to one another. And we all should head in hand working together to make this world a better place for all of us. To listen to more Belongings podcast episodes, follow the ASEAN Soji Caucus on Facebook or Twitter at ASEAN Soji and on Instagram at ASEAN Soji Caucus. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons license.